Learning data analysis is one of the best things you can do today. With high paying salaries, fully remote work, and high job satisfaction, I really don't see myself doing anything else today. This is exactly how I would learn data analytics if I had to start over again from scratch. For some context here, I have over three years of experience ranging from industries from technology, finance, and education, and my journey here has been anything but typical. In fact, I did not study computer science in college or anything technical for that matter. I actually studied business and worked in finance right after college. But despite everything stacked against me, I took a long and difficult route to get to where I am today. Now, if I could go back in time, what would I do differently? Here's exactly how I would learn data analytics in 2023 if I could start all over from scratch and save some time. If you're new to this channel, my name's Rohan and I make content related to lending careers in data. My goal is to help you land a job in data analytics and just become a better data analyst if you're already in the industry. If you want to connect with like-minded people who are all interested in data analytics, I actually run a Discord community with over 700 people all into data analytics. In fact, some people work in industry and people have gotten referrals and work on projects together. I'll link that in the bio below. So in this video, I'm going to break this video out into two parts. One being the mindset you're going to need to have to be successful in this field and two, the exact roadmap that you're gonna to need to take. Whether you're pivoting careers from an unrelated profession completely or you're just starting out from undergrad, this video is for you and can be applicable for both. Mindset. Data analysis literally requires a different way of thinking. It's the way of thinking analytically. What do I mean by analytical thinking? So if when any problem comes up, you need to analyze all the details that are related to the problem and think more logically rather than emotionally. I didn't realize it at the time, but this way of thinking not only applied to my career, but also applied to different parts of my life, which I just did not know. One example could just be my exercise routine. Should I do cardio right after lifting weights or do cardio a few hours after lifting weights? You need to adopt curiosity and thinking very detail oriented rather than randomly choosing a solution. Being analytical is simply put, asking the right questions and coming up with the most logical solution. I'll go over another example of being analytical. When it comes to finding a place to move, should you actually buy a house on one hand or rent a house? An analytical person would actually do research and find details such as the mortgage rate, the real estate price, and rental rates, and then make the most logical decision based on these information. The next step is having a reliance on data and numbers. Numbers don't lie. Well, maybe a little bit. One of the most integral parts of finding data to use is making sure the data is actually correct. Your job is to try to use the most correct data without any biases to make the most accurate analysis for your stakeholders. I'm not proud to say this, but when you're starting off, it's inevitable that you will find dirty data and that it is extremely biased and have the right results. And that's okay, it's part of the learning process, but the important part is you're constantly improving and you're finding ways to get rid of all bias. One story that I have is that when I was working on a project, there were tons of duplicates in the data. This completely skewed our results. So when it came down to actually presenting the analysis to stakeholders who actually understood the data and the domain, my analysis looked completely wrong. And it wasn't because I was doing the wrong analysis. It was actually because of the data I was using was completely wrong. So I can't stress how important it is to actually make sure the data you're using is clean and ready to be analyzed. On this note, there is no single source of truth for data. Almost every data set is a little bit wrong. And I have over three years of work experience now I can tell you for a fact that it is so imperative to be cross-referencing your data with other data sets, maybe online or internally. Half my job as a data analyst is making sure the data actually aligns with other data sets that we have, and it's within a 5% margin of each other. When you see data that doesn't align, it's not really your fault, and you should probably go to the data engineers or the product managers who are in charge of this data set up more upstream. This often causes such a delay in analysis, and it is really a headache, but no analysis is better than a bad analysis with bad data. I want you to remember this throughout your career because it's one of the most important problems that I see people do so much. They just try to do a quick and dirty analysis within a week, but honestly, you should be spending weeks if not months and making sure the data is accurate and the analysis you're using is correct. Once you adopt the analytical mindset, it's now time to learn the hard skills. So many people have mixed opinions on what language to learn first, whether it be SQL, Python, or R, but I actually recommend all my students actually start off with statistics. This is such a controversial and underrated opinion. And before you comment, data analysts don't need statistics, hold on for a second. When you're building a house, you actually need a plan before you just start using tools and hammering away, right? Otherwise, think about it. You'll just be hammering around at random bricks, putting them in a line, and there'll be no cohesion between them. That's how I think a lot of people do. They randomly just go on GitHub and find some random code that kind of relates with Python or SQL and just try to plug it in. But this isn't how analytics actually works. There's a book that I highly recommend that my mentors actually told to me called Practical Statistics. So I'll actually link in the description below. I highly recommend checking this out and at least like perusing it before actually going on to the rest of your journey. At the bare minimum, you need to understand distribution, p-values, 
and hypothesis testing. I highly recommend taking a course or just watching some YouTube videos or even just reading through the textbook before moving on. The next tool you're gonna to need to know is either SQL or Excel. Both of these tools are used to combine, transform, and analyze large data sets. SQL is mainly used for big data from large scale data warehouses and people typically use it in industries with tools such as MySQL and Excel on the other hand is mainly more for small scale data with a sheet or two of data for analysis. So if you're just starting off and you have no knowledge of Excel, I recommend doing Excel before doing SQL. It's also a great starting point before moving on to something like SQL, Python, or R because it has such an easy UI and it's not very code dependent. Some Excel functions that I actually use a lot in my career are VLOOKUPs, pivot tables, and maybe if else logic. Play around with Google Sheets, download some data and just make a quick and easy dashboard with a few visualizations. And if you're coming from another profession or another company and you're already working, Google Sheets and Excel are so widely used, chances are the company you're at is already using it. So try to volunteer for projects and use Excel for some basic data analysis of your current company. After you learn the basics of Excel, the next step you need to learn is SQL. I actually have a video describing what exactly SQL is for absolute beginners, so I'll link that in the video below. SQL is a simple programming language. It's basically used to communicate with large scale databases and the most ubiquitous tool you're gonna see used by data analysts and data scientists. So I actually learned SQL on the job with project-based learning. I started my new job and literally on the first day, my managers gave me a few days and said, here's our database, you have access to it. Now pull this certain data and answer these questions. And I had no choice but to learn it. So I was constantly looking stuff up on Google as such a simple syntax. And over time, over the next few days, I was able to actually get it. And I was actually presented to him. So this is absolutely the best way to learn. You on the other hand, don't need to struggle how I did on that first day. And they're actually much better platforms that can get the job done much quicker. DataCamp, for example, is one of the tools that I highly recommend. Look, you can watch a ton of tutorials on YouTube and you can watch a ton of courses on LinkedIn Learning or Udemy, but you're not actually gonna learn. You're just gonna feel good that you watch a ton of videos, but the only way to truly learn is to learn by doing. And that's what I really like about DataCamp. You can actually practice what they're teaching you in videos with data that they already have stored in their system. You can spend hundreds of hours watching people swim or watching people ride a bike and how to actually ride a bike. But the moment you get on a bike or you step into a pool, you will immediately fall off or you may need a lifeguard. So highly recommend using DataCamp to actually practice what you're learning immediately. And then once you're done with that, to take it to another level, you need to actually do projects on your own. Maybe download some data sets and just play around with SQL and then upload them to your portfolio. Now, when I was getting started and I had to move on to R or Python, I was terrified. I'm not afraid to admit that. I didn't do too well in computer science classes early on, so this thought almost like moved me away from data analytics altogether. And I'm so glad I just stuck with it. Let me first go through what these languages are and what they were designed to do. Python is a general programming language. It's actually used for much, much more things such as game development or just general development with data analysis as well. R on the other hand is specifically designed for stats to play with large scale data sets. So this is more made for data analysts and data scientists. Both can be done to get any job done for data analysts or data scientists, but if I had to choose one, it would probably be Python. The reason being is I see it actually being more widely used in industry and even going forward, I think more people will be adopting Python because how versatile in general it is. So the resources that actually help me learn these aren't the random classes you're gonna see on Udemy. I've spent literally hundreds of dollars on Udemy and I can't tell you that it's really taught me anything. I maybe watched 10 to 20% of the videos and I feel like I learned nothing. But I learned through a process called project-based learning. This is basically where you take up a project or a big question. In this case, let's talk about the Airbnb market in New York City. Maybe you wanna decide what the correlation is between the pricing and the ratings of the stars. You would then go on some public database websites such as Google databases, or Kaggle and find data that has this. There are also some free public APIs that you can pull in data from. Then you just Google some simple things like how do I import data? How do I import data from an Excel file? How do I import data from a CSV file? How do I manipulate the data? And that's how you learn. There's a large learning curve for this, but there is an easier way, a way with training wheels. You know how we mentioned data camp earlier? Well, they have tutorials in Python and R as well. They even have a project section. So they have example walkthrough projects that you can just code along with them and see in real time how you're doing. So I highly recommend this with your training wheels and once you finish these data camp courses off, start your own projects. This is how you really learn, this is how industry is gonna be. This could be something such as art, music, or even pottery. And once you have these interests written down, you need to go find data sets that relate to these. I recommend going on Kaggle because they're literally 
I think there are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of data sets that are completely free to use. Go on there and then just download stuff that interests you. Kaggle is basically a large community of data analysts and data scientists all accessing data that people are uploading for free online. And the nice thing about Kaggle is you can actually see other people's code, other people's analysis. So the way I actually learned Python, one of the ways, was I did a Titanic project. And in this Titanic project, there were tons of people who already conducted analysis with Python. So I would just review their code, I would copy it, make slight adjustments. And this is one of the best ways to learn. Don't let people tell you that copying code is bad. This is how you learn. Just make minor adjustments, figure out how everything works, and I promise you that's the best way to learn. If you need additional help, there are tons of tutorials online that I highly recommend here on YouTube. So maybe watch them while you're going through a project itself. Okay, by now, maybe you have a few projects under your belt. What do you do next? You need to create a GitHub account. This is basically where you're gonna upload your projects so employers can see them and maybe talk about it during your interviews. Back when I was applying to jobs with zero data analytics experience, I had a ton of projects on my resume and a ton of projects uploaded to my portfolio. So during the interviewer, the interviewers were very impressed that I already had experience with all of these complex like data analysis methods with my own data sets. And this helped talk about what I was actually gonna do on the job. One thing I can tell you for certain with my over three years of work experience in data analytics is people will constantly ask you for data. And right when they ask you for data, they'll ask you questions about it. They won't be able to make meaning of this unstructured raw data. So part of data analytics is automating these through data visualization dashboards and reports. So you're actually telling a story with the data so people won't have to come and ask you for questions, saving you time and the company time. Knowing that you can create visuals that both are visually appealing and answering important questions is so important. One of the most important lessons I've learned in my career specifically was that you can have the most robust dashboard, you can answer the most important questions, but if your dashboard doesn't look good, people will bias and think your report isn't valid. You need to put in the extra effort to make your dashboard look visually appealing. Now, which tool should you actually use for data visualization? There's so many tools under the sun when it comes to data visualization, such as Python, Tableau, Power BI, Google's Looker, even Excel or Google's Data Studio. There's so many options. The most common tool that I see at most companies is Tableau. I think the UI is a bit clunky and they kind of seem like they're packing too much into the tool and it's kind of hard to use and not as intuitive. I think the industry is moving more towards Google's Looker it's basically a more simpler version of Tableau. I prefer it a lot more. This is actually one of the first tools I've learned on. So if you do want to get started, the industry is moving more towards Looker, but maybe start off with Tableau and then gradually work your way up the Looker. And lastly, Power BI. I haven't personally used Power BI much in my career, but I do know they're owned by Microsoft. And maybe it integrates well with a bunch of Microsoft products. You now know the exact steps what I would do to become a data analyst in 2023. If you want to see my journey of how I became a data analyst in three months, I'll link that below. Lastly, I do want to plug this. I actually started a mentorship program that's almost filled up completely. And it's basically teaching people how to learn data analytics and actually land a job in data analytics. In these mentorships, I'll actually be meeting with you weekly for an hour, providing tailored assignments, tailored projects, and providing resume reviews. Some of my previous students have landed roles such as Spotify and Amazon. So if you feel like you wanna fast track your career, I highly recommend checking this out. I wish I hired a coach for my career. I ended up hiring coaches for tennis, baseball, and I can't imagine learning these without it. So I don't know why people don't actually hire career coaches much. So if you're interested, check the link in my bio. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.